some companies underestimate international students. The culture and recruitment in Finland, I'm hoping that is changing. When you apply to a job, the first thing before you apply, you have to take a screenshot about the job. If we don't have any op- open positions, and then I have to just say, no, we, we have nothing at the moment. I think you guys are taking notes because this is really important things for you to know. Hello, everyone. My name is Ilyara, and thanks for being on our second podcast of Talent Boost Podcast. And today's topic is going to be really interesting for our international students because we're going to talk about career tips, CV tips, and recruitment process in Finland. And today I am having the guests from Quantil. Quantil is a company headquartered in Finland with eight offices worldwide with 20 operations everywhere (laughs) and they are specializing in IT jobs, digital services, cloud, uh, other things as well. It's a really amazing company and I'm happy to present our guests today from Quantel, Lizette and Katrina. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hi. How are you doing? Very good. Yes. Very good. It's nice to be here and thanks for inviting us. Can you tell a bit about yourself from what position are you working at and where are you from? Maybe I can start. Uh, Yes, I'm Katrina Dan. I'm a HR specialist in Quantel and I've been working in Quantel now for just over three years, almost three and a half years. Um, I'm working here in New Vascular office and uh, I'm born and raised in in New Vascular, but um, spent some time living living around the world as well and uh, Quantel is my first um, position in the IT sector and uh, uh, from my previous based on my um, or compared to previous experience work experience I can say IT is is very different um, Quantel of course is is um, especially as a company New Vascular even more different because uh, we're so international and and with the um, work uh, working language being English, uh, we we stand a little bit different from from other IT companies. Although most IT companies, I think, do operate quite quite internationally and globally as well. Um, I'm I'm mostly um, working within um, a different kind of HR roles uh, uh, outside of recruitment. So that's why I was really happy to get my colleague Lisa to join me today, who has the the in-depth knowledge on the recruitment processes as well. Okay, my name is Lisa Varela. Uh, I work as a talent acquisition and development manager in Quantel for almost a year now. Uh, I have a previous experience in the uh, engineering and mining company. So this is also my first um, experience in IT. Uh, but I have a lot of experience in recruiting, recruitment. Um, I'm from Chile, Santiago, and then I started um, working in talent acquisition, recruitment, onboarding. Yeah, I think I went through all the all the way to HR. So I'm very happy of being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for deciding to join us today and I'm really glad and I believe that is going to be a fun discussion today. Um, and I would love to share with you actually why we're here and what problems international students face. And on behalf of all these international students, I want to mention that mostly international students say that they have uh, difficulties with CV creation, so they don't know what to highlight, especially when you don't have a prior experience in a specific job. So they would love to know from HR, I think, straightly, how they can highlight their skills in CV, how does this recruitment process work, because some people are not aware how it's done in Finland, because coming from another foreign country, especially when it's not in EU, they don't know mostly like uh, small details of how it's going in Europe, for example. And I think also they would love to hear some secret tips that uh, some people (laughs) want uh, to know. And I think HRs know a lot about this. It's hard as an international student in Finland when you come to 
foreign country, you are having hard times with learning the language, but you also need to find a job. And yeah, especially in central Finland, I think there's quite problem. But it's changing now, and I'm really glad that you also put an effort to bring awareness among students. And probably I would love to ask, first of all, uh, what is good CV for you as an HR? Uh, yeah, well, I have to say that it, it is not just for students, international students, uh, to be a little bit without any clues on how to uh, apply or um, yeah apply to any positions here. It's also for professionals. I, I had the same experience when I like came to Finland. So I started with my CV from my native country and I realized that I sent it and sent it uh, applications and I didn't uh, receive any replies, no or maybe or anything at all. So after, um, I don't know, maybe eight months or nine months, I realized that I, I needed to to do something different. So I started to check and then um, I found this cover letter thing, CV thing, different thing. So I, I changed mine and now I have to say that this is one of the important things <clears throat> that you need to, you need to really uh, put focus on the company that you are applying for and then research, as, as we were discussing before, that uh, as a as a applicant, you have to research the company that you are um, applying to, and then you have to tailor your CV for that company or for that sector, or yeah, uh, or for that role. I think this is key on it. You have to tailor your CV. Uh, of course, it's not like it is not. Uh, it's boring if you have the same CV and then you have to change it every time that you are applying to a different role. But this is the way that uh, you can be uh, pick it from the company because the the company is always looking after something special in the applicants, something like you can rely or relate or yeah. So this is one tip that I can give now. And. And um, while I agree everything that Lizzie said, um, also to add that what, what I've been reading recently a lot on LinkedIn, especially when it comes to IT positions, uh, is that um, a lot of companies are looking for senior positions. And there are a lot of juniors um, mm -hmm. or, gra or recent graduates that are finding it very difficult to, to get their um, first job in, in the market and, <clears throat> and to get the opportunity to grow into that role. So there it's probably even more highlighted the importance of putting effort into the CV and also to think about those things outside of your work experience. What it is that you can bring up about your own knowledge or your own interest towards that field, especially in IT, there are a lot you can you can do and learn also outside of work in life that, that you can bring into the work in life um, as just as a personal interest. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree with you. There are a lot of courses that people can take online, even on LinkedIn, actually, if you have like premium subscription, you can get plenty of certifications and that is going to boost your CV, I think, quite well. So yeah. I think you guys are taking notes because this is really important things for you to know. Um, and can you tell me what are the main three mistakes that people, when look putting their CV, do? Uh, the first one is the typos in mm. the CV. It is uh, we, the ones that we are reading the CVs are humans. So we know that there is a uh, possibility to mess up with the CV. But I think when you're applying to a position, uh, this is your face to, the, to them. Mm -hmm. So you need to be perfect. So then, and there is a lot of uh, uh, maybe translators or uh, grammatical correctors or anything. So there is no. Uh, this is something that you can know. This is a no for a recruiter. Um, so 
this is one of the important things. Another one important, maybe not a mistake, but when you start uh, from the beginning of your life. So I think in the CV you have to to go in the other way around. Your last experience or your last um, education, it's important because if if well in in the case of a nest student maybe you don't have a lot of experiences but if you are working in in for example in finland uh, the the young people study every summer uh, sorry work every summer different places so this you have to put first the la- the latest experience and then and so on this is another mistake uh, i don't rem- do you have any anything yeah i'd like to also highlight that what Lizzie was saying as the first thing is that the type was that you show commitment that you're actually interested and keen on on receiving that position um that you've put enough effort to make sure that at least the basics basics are there because you can think about a recruiter uh in my previous position I was handling a lot of CVs uh for various different kinds of positions and uh and when you read through hundreds per day um it's it's very easy to for a, a CV to to become as part of that one big mass so so something that'll make you stand out if it's if it's a plain cv if it has i actually yeah the typos will make you stand out but <laughs> not in a yeah, not, not in a positive <laughs> way um but but yeah um so and and if it's too long uh, if there's too too much irrelevant information um all information that is relevant for the position of course should be there but if there's irrelevant and, and this is where we come back to um tailoring the cv for the position that um um if 20 years ago you worked uh, as a dog walker um it may not be relevant for the position that you're applying for um in you know working as a summer job in a restaurant um it it may be relevant if you don't have anything else to add there if that is the only experience you have but if there are many other things in between then you don't need to list absolutely everything pick the ones that are relevant and the most recent ones um perhaps that's what comes to my mind and mm. also important important to say that uh you need to um pick the things from that experiences that you have from the past that are important for this position so could be similar role not the same and maybe you accomplish a lot of stuff but then you need to uh, list there the ones that are relevant for this position i think that's important because there are, i i already told you that uh, in my first uh job as a recruiter i was taking cvs of 16 pages so mm. uh, and then in between when you're reading that you you lost your mind the, you don't know so then it will be the next and the next so then it's important maybe to have something specifically that that is as katrina said that is important for that role mm-hmm. yeah and and it It doesn't necessarily be something like uh, experience, a job experience. It could be also a hobby that it shows commitment or anything that, for example, if you were maybe a scout and you were taking over the kids younger than you, for example, or some some specific things that, or you were like doing ballet lessons for 10 years, it shows your commitment to something. So it, it doesn't make, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that CV was too long, like 16 pages. I was, <laughs> I'm so surprised. But how long at maximum level should CV be for junior positions, let's say, for internships? One page. One page. Yes, yeah. For junior positions, I, for example, my CV is one page. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking after junior positions, for example. It's like, it depends, of course but i think you can summarize so if you if you tailor the cv or design the cv in a way that there is in one part uh the the experience and then in other part the education and you you can also have languages that are, that are important if it's important for the job or some skills for example that are important for the job then you can just list it you don't need to put all the information where that well it depends of course if your degree mm-hmm. then you have to put from which university but if there is a 
Microsoft Excel uh, course. Maybe it's not important in which year or, or it from from where. So yeah, mm -hmm. one page. Okay. And my next question regarding CV would be how structure of CV should look like. Because uh, in some websites it says like you should put first education and then work experience. Some people say that work experience goes first. And now like there is a topic that uh, people don't require summary of the candidate anymore in CVs. So what is your opinion about this structuring? Uh, I think f uh, from my experience the CV is uh, something very personal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can look after ideas uh, online, for example, but then you have to find your yourself in the CV. So it couldn't be something that is not representing you. So that's um, if you ask me if I prefer to read the experience and, or the education. I, as a recruiter, I need to read both. So uh, it doesn't matter if there is one in, in on top. Because if there is a good experience, then I have to check the degree or vice versa. I, if it is a good education there, I have to check the experience because um, unless you are a student that you don't have any experience, then you need to check both. And then there are some designs nowadays that you can have both in different parts of the CV, but together. Now regarding the summary, I think in Finland it's important to have the summary, um, but not long summary and repeating the same things that you are saying in the in the experiences. For example, could be just one sentence showing you um, in a in a more well. It depends. There are some job ads that are more formal, and there are others that are, are very informal. So, I think you need to to tailor again the CV mm -hmm. in a way that that like represents you for that role specifically. Mm -hmm. I love what you were saying there um, and, and about the kind of that the CV has to represent you that that you can own it um, because the, the thing is that re every recruiter is different. Every recruiter has their own bias and their own opinions and their own values and thoughts and ideas what should be what. So so instead of um, trying to please everybody with the CV, it's it's most important that you feel that you're pleased yourself with it and, and that it, it kind of represents who you are. And and of course, the, the, the text and the, the content can be tailored accordingly, but but just so that you're comfortable with it yourself. Um, that, that, that would be how I would feel about it, because it becomes very difficult when you start trying to please everybody, when you try, start to... To, to think that I wonder what this the, the person who reads this what do they want to to see you what, in what order they want to read these things so or, or anything like that you got to think about of course that there is a human being in most cases sometimes AI um, reading the CV that that you want to to save their time and you want to go to the point and you want to be precise um, just so that you get noticed but what it is that you want to how you want to tell about yourself um, that should look like you mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Sorry. yeah, go. Uh, because what's Katrina saying that also is important to 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 say that uh, if you failed, like your application in a way, it's not that you are failing as a person or or as a professional. It is like maybe there's a, not a match in between you and the company. So um, and that's um, the CV is something that help you with that. But then also uh, you need to, to you need, it, it, this is a two way street. It's not that you will be picked and then you don't have anything to say. You also as an applicant have to be picked your, the company that you want to work for. And this is very important because there are many of um, students I know because we were recruiting students last year and then many students that they, 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 they didn't, uh, it was the same for them. It's like, I need a job and uh, anything. Mm -hmm. So then when you are there in a job that you don't like, then it is complicated. So then you, you, you need to think a little bit, is this job for me or not? 
and if you put your CV in a or your cover letter in a in a way that is representing you, maybe you won't, won't be picked. But for some reason, you won't be picked. So maybe the next one. So I think that's very important also. And this is excellent point what Lizzie is making. Um, of course, for students, it's it's probably the most important thing in the mind is to get that that first job opportunity to mm-hmm. to get into the working life and to learn new skills. Um, but but that's that's really important because the the research also shows that that if there is a mismatch with the values, for instance, with the organization, if you go to an organization just for the sake of getting a job, um, yes, you will walk out with with some experience, but it can also be a very bad experience. <laughs> so so to have that good match, that's important. Yeah, coming back to what you said, that you need first to please yourself, not trying to impress others. I think I agree with you because I've been like doing a lot of CVs and you mentioned that before like people used to do one CV for many jobs and I was doing the same thing and then I understood that this strategy strategy doesn't work and I need to change. Of course it takes more time and it's more difficult but it gives you better chances to get a job and while doing all of this and going through this recruitment process by myself uh, and doing different research on Google how good CV look like. Um, I think I got this confidence about myself that it's not if if I'm getting rejected, it's not because I am bad. It's it's probably because there is really a mismatch between the company. And now I think I take this rejects as a I don't know uh, as a blessing because I'm just like well maybe then there is that something is going to be better for me. Uh, regarding the job and maybe I will find my company that matches my values and it was for a reason and I think that would many students I would love to understand that it's it's not because you're bad or you don't have enough experience or anything or HR doesn't love you I don't know but but because yeah like you will have something better for sure but it also requires that you need to analyze what you did, how you did it and compare like what could have been done better and so on. And yeah, I think it's important to do, you know, a prior research about the company before applying to the job, because I feel like if you would apply to the job without even looking at the company's website and then you somehow proceed to the we- uh, to the interview and they ask you something about their company you're like uh it's cool yeah i want to work with you guys hire me and it gets awkward because i think i had similar situations sometimes when i didn't do enough research about the company and i felt like i think i should have put an effort to learn more about it and and think what I'm going to say about the company, why I want to work here. Uh, Yeah, I think that this is very important. Uh, For example, in my role now, sometimes I have to call uh, candidates for the first screening. So I receive the, the, the CV and the cover letter and everything because they are applying to our company. Okay. And then I call them after one week, two weeks, three weeks, could be one month. And then they don't know. And I said that, uh, my name is Lisa Varela. I'm calling you because you are applying for this role in Quantel. And they said, uh, uh, okay, but they, I'm, I'm sure that they don't know. They don't remember. So of course you don't have to remember every, every applications that you, that you send, but also that is another thing that is important when you apply to a job the first thing before you apply you have to take a screenshot about the job ad and then you have to save it and then you have to put the for example in march 13th i applied to this uh, specific job in this company and then you save it so when because first you will receive a call from someone in hr that will screen you so we'll ask you some uh, basic things like if you are working, um, if you are familiar with the company, something like um, what is your salary expectations, for example, those kind of things. But then you will have to go to the interview with the line manager, for example. And, and when you have to go to the interview, 
the, the job ad is already closed because we have to close sometimes the close before. And then you will go and then you won't find the job ad anymore. Mm. And then you don't know for which jo- job ad did you apply? What is the role? Maybe you know the, the name, but there are some specific tasks that you need to, to remember. So this is very important that you, you have a track tracker of your like applications and then you because for example when I applied to Quantel I, I Quantel wasn't the, the just the only one that I applied so I had everything so of course I don't remember everything but I can say that okay yes I remember I applied to Quantel for this role yeah yeah you can ask me anything and if there there is any specific uh, questions, you can say that uh, I need to check my notes because I don't remember everything or I'm in class now, or etc. So, but it's important mm. to have it. Okay. So it means like we can take our time to kind of remember of, of what course. application was. and, and Yes, and of all. course. And, and you have all the right to say that, yeah, I, I think that I applied to this company, but I applied to another five or ten companies mm. and I and I don't have on top of my mind everything. Can you please remember me a little bit uh what was the position? Mm-hmm. But if you say it like that, it 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 makes sense for me as a recruiter. Okay, I have to explain you because it I don't know, it was one month in between. But yeah. but it's a different approach that the one that was saying mm, which company? Mm, I don't think so. And I have the the, the CV yeah. here on my hands. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what I decided to do with this recruitment processes is that I actually even created the separate um, email for applying to the applications because sometimes there are like overloading emails coming, and so I created a separate one, and I also take screenshots of the positions and I save it on like my se- separate um, folder to look sometimes and when applying i also do this seo of the job advertisement so what the company mentioned what they're looking for i try to put like two three kind of skills that were mentioned from the job to my cv Mm. so to show that i'm also a match i think at least that that's how i do it i don't know how other international students do that but that that is like my strategy as a student. But for you as an HR, it doesn't really matter what kind of platform you choose to edit your CV or layout you choose. So as long as it's readable and there are like not typo mistakes, it's fine. And as long as it's clear mm. enough. Um, yeah, I don't think if Europass or something but also when you well not you but some students started to write and write and write trying to to prove that they have a lot of experience but if you look at the cv you know that with one page is enough then this is another thing important and you don't need to um just one with like the important things and this is important when you tailor your cv because you will know in the future so then for example this thing that you are doing now this mm-hmm. talent boost podcast uh it's in is for your cv could be there yeah, yeah and then you don't need to write a lot of the thing but it's important that you are responsible for this and performing the interviews and inviting the the guests and everything so mm-hmm. these kind of things you can put on your cv and they're very important yeah because uh I remember I wanted to be like a project manager, but I don't have any prior experience. But then I'm thinking about this podcast thing is that actually it is kind of project management uh, in any part because I do this like different, you know, parts of this project. So first I research the guests and then I send them emails and then like I book the meetings with them and so on and so on. And I think that that's how I highlight in my CV that yes, I don't have like a project management experience, but I did something similar in my previous experience. And I'm really glad you bring that up um, because that kind of um, 
works as a bridge to the thought that I was going to say is is that uh, job titles can be very different in in, in different companies. Mm-hmm. So it's also important to explain what it is that you did there, like and and especially if you've achieved something. So during my time, uh, on or during the time that I was working there, um, the like thinking from purely HR perspective, the, the number of uh, of of absences <laughs> would decrease to twenty percent, something something like that. Or or if it's uh, some you know working on some projects. So what did the project achieve? And 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 so, something concrete. Um, mm-hmm. What was um, what was your impact in that company? Um, but but like like you said there, o- opening it up. Like so, um, explaining what what goes into it. So so just to say that uh, organizing podcasts. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does that actually mean? So, so um, in in bit more detail without mm-hmm. going into too much detail. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's a fine line, um, and and then still still you were asking that if the if it matters what the CV is like. So as long as it looks like you, yeah, it it doesn't matter unless of course it's some kind of very creative role you're applying for. Mm-hmm. Then don't send a white blank Times New Roman. Uh, font size 12 <laughs> see me yeah. show that you're creative yeah. in in some way and and also think about the position that you're applying for yeah or reverse like if you're applying for a finance position you should probably not send like this i don't know <laughs> a colorful cv because i think finance is more like a s- stricter than creative jobs like marketing so yeah it always depends and i agree with you that it requires tailoring a lot 